Namaskar everyone and uh, welcome to the fifth webinar by CEO Love. And today we are having a conversation on how to stay ahead of the consumer customer behavioral change. Um, it was end of March and uh, the lockdown was being implemented in all parts of India. And the first, the RO system at home stopped working. And then it was followed by an urgent need of servicing of the refrigerator. Uh, let's fast forward to me and my wife said uh, anybody entering the home needs to wear the mask and uh, the kid was given a responsibility of giving the hand sanitizer and somebody enters and so on. And the first visitor who entered the house was the from the RO company. Now he was wearing a mask but he said that he will not take our sanitizer because he was carrying a sanitizer bottle. He pulled it out from his pocket. Uh, he pulled it, put it on his hands, wore a mask. Uh, and uh, he entered the kitchen, did all the servicing. And then he discarded the mask, uh, uh, the, the hand gloves and uh, threw it away. It was perfectly done, well taken care of himself and his customer. And I would very proudly say the, brown, the, uh, the brand was Jureka Foods. Now let's go to the refrigerator. The, the service center guy came in and he was wearing a mask, but uh, he was not carrying a gloves. He was not carrying the uh, sanitizer and he touched the refrigerator without sanitizing it hands as well. Uh, I won't name the brand because uh, it could be an outsourced brand uh, servicing as well. So this has been happening. So there has been a customer, how they are expecting a change into their you know. I also know a famous uh, jeweler in uh, Bangalore who says the city where I stay. And he said that he will not allow a customer to touch jewelry pieces so that there's no spread of uh, COVID. Now I just wonder, you know, how would you buy a jewelry or clothes without touching or trying them out? Uh, let's take another case, you know, a customer wants to enter a store uh, but refuses to get thermally screened, would like to enter without wearing a mask, uh, would the retailer allow the customer inside? Uh, today he may, tomorrow he may not, you know. Uh, will we continue to behave like this for a long time with fear on our mind? Uh, will we as brands uh, and our customers will change the behavior? How are we providing customer with safety guarantees that will restore trust? Uh, is there a need to change the brand communication and marketing strategies? Uh, what are the major trends in business pre and COVID times? Uh, can we do future forecasting, et cetera, et cetera. And to answer all these questions, uh, my friends, today we have a, a very notable panel of speakers. Uh, they are all exceptional leaders and need no introduction. But following a strict guidelines given to me by my editor, allow me to do so. Uh, so we have uh, Amlik Singh, the founder of Chai Point, uh, the man who revolutionized the chai business uh, in India after Modi. Uh, then we have Vivek Srivatsa, who heads the marketing for the largest uh, car manufacturer in the country, Tata Motors. Uh, Neeraj Behel, uh, Managing Director and CEO of Bosch Siemens Home Appliances, uh, the brand which so beautifully balances the uh, mid-segment and luxury uh, uh, home appliances. And then we have Farooq Balsara, the partner and the market leader for Hansen Young. And he advises uh, some of the India's uh, top corporates on customer behavior as well. And to moderate this conversation, uh, we have uh, Sumi Lula, uh, the man who certainly needs no introduction. Uh, he has revolutionized the uh, media industry. Uh, he has been at the, in his previous avatar, he's been at the helm of uh, Balaji, uh, uh, Bennett Coleman, Times Television, Sony, um, and, and, and more. And today he's the chairman of BARC, a broadcast uh, audience uh, uh, association. And uh, so ladies and gentlemen, friends, uh, buckle up for a very engaging conversation. And Sunil, the screen is all yours. Thank you and uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you are all safe and well on a hot Saturday morning and staying healthy over here. We have an interesting subject, which is to stay ahead of consumer behavior. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go to each of the panelists first with the two questions I'll post to them shortly. And then we engage in a conversation and take it from there. I know that there are some questions queuing up. So time to time, I'll go pick a few questions. And so we can get the audience engagement going as we go, as we move along. We have to close at 12.15. So I'll make sure that we stay to the clock. 
I don't think anybody could have predicted something called COVID, the lockdown <clears throat> and the impact it had in India. So the whole idea of forecasting, the whole idea of trying to study behavior has changed. We have seen consumers have changed their media consumption, food consumption patterns have changed, it's become whatever I can get, it's no more what is my favorite. People who are used to reading the physical copy of the newspaper don't always get that physical copy. People who are used to certain exercise regimes, I think most of us on this panel probably miss the feel and touch of a boarding pass for which you catch a plane. Uh, that's not happened. So consumers have gone through a reset. Some are interesting resets, they are positive. <coughs> a large number of people unfortunately have left all the big mega cities to go to their villages and towns which will cause its own sociological and economic impact. So to talk a little bit about what's happening, what we think are going to be new trends, what is the disruption, I'd like each panelist to take two parts. One is to talk of the subject, in a sense, just give their own narrative, and then also talk about what has been their lockdown moment. And since we are talking about trends and forecast, let's begin with the house that does that, I think, for a day-to-day -day living. We will start with Farooq. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Sunil, and good morning, uh, all of you. Uh, uh, it's an interesting uh, times that we are going through. Uh, and like Deepak mentioned, uh, for all of us, suddenly health and hygiene is top of mind. This whole underappreciated role of uh, hand washing, uh, uh, inspecting the produce before buying it or washing the produce, uh, the distance we keep from one another as we stand in queues, uh, uh, and, and how we pay uh, uh, for stuff. Uh, everything has suddenly changed and, and the change has been fairly, fairly uh, drastic. But in terms of the immediate uh, uh, personal and societal changes, uh, other than this uh, health and hygiene stuff, uh, and, and I uh, was looking at my bathroom closet uh, today morning, and, and till now it was always a hard pick and a hair wash uh, out there, but suddenly you have Lizol and Domex and uh, any other brand, uh, if some brands are not available, Sanifresh also stocked up. So, so even the brand loyalty uh, is suddenly uh, uh, changed and, and there's greater reliance uh, on experts in all walks of life for facts, for insights, for, for guidance, whatever we can get hold of on WhatsApp or, or the net. Uh, uh, the other big change which has happened is uh, consumers are tending to conserve cash, uh, defer discretionary spends, uh, uh, be it, uh, of course, right now the restaurants and theaters are shut down, but even when things open up, uh, you won't see that uh, happening uh, very quickly. Uh, leisure travel, luxury products, uh, purchases, uh, all likely to get the curve. And there'll be a preference for local origin produce. So if I were to buy a dairy product, I would buy it something which is produced in and around Mumbai, uh, 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 as opposed to uh, getting something from Delhi because I don't know how good the cold chain has been, what checkpoints it is going through. So, so the preference will be for local origin produce. Uh, but the big change, uh, uh, which is going to be a longer lasting uh, and a irrevocable uh, change in my mind, will be the accelerated use of technology by by consumers uh, for a more convenient, more uh, enhanced uh, user experience. Uh, uh, and, and we have all gone through it over the last two months. Uh, and not just consumers, even retailers have now experienced that. Uh, so earlier you will have salesmen from the company uh, uh, or from the large distributor approaching the retailers for what their orders for the day or for the week were. And now most of the retailers are beginning to use apps uh, to uh, pull in the orders. and 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 with the likes of a uh, Geo, Facebook, this uh, whole Kirana uh, platform that they're creating and many other such uh, startups coming in uh, like uh, Udan or uh, ShopEx, uh, we will see a big, big change uh, in, in use of technology as a catalyst uh, uh, out there. But that will also mean that consumers may have to give up a bit on their privacy. Uh, so as you download the Arogya Setu app, 
or many other different apps as you travel around uh, uh, both within the country or outside to get access to various things you may have to give up uh, the privacy that you earlier had and people may be able to track you uh, down uh, which earlier was not the case and the other longer term change uh, that i see is there'll be increased spends on on mediclaim on healthcare uh, even in terms of investments and in financial instruments it will be more uh, on products which are more financially secure so so i think all these are radical changes and corporates will have to really uh, embrace digital in a, in a big big way both in terms of direct to retailer as well as direct to consumer type of models i'll, I'll stop there and can maybe have a more thanks farooq i'm i'm going to go to neeraj uh, to get you didn't tell us your uh, lockdown moment farooq before i go to neeraj I think Farooq got muted, so I'm going to go to Neeraj. Farooq, you got muted. Okay, you're open now. You're, you're, could you just My lockdown again? moment is every Saturday we have a Reliance uh, fresh truck coming in, so I volunteer uh, for that. Uh, uh, so we have a farmers market like thing in the building, uh, uh, and and the whole community comes down. So it's quite a uh, interesting moment, and and again, it's opening up a new uh, channel for. Uh, Uh, consumer product companies and for retailers the sort of resident wealth association channel which earlier was not there so uh, again a new trend coming through thank thank you for those trends i am going to go to neeraj you know get his overall views get his lockdown moment <clears throat> and maybe also neeraj tell us you know what what are you seeing as a disruption that is taking place uh, hi everyone hi all the panelists morning and uh, audience uh of course i'll agree with farooq that this covid was absolutely unpredictable and nobody in the world could predict it and it has changed the world for good maybe it was a reset which was needed for the mankind uh what we are seeing consumer behavior is actually significantly changing taking a view from you know before this uh, went live deepak was telling that how people can buy jewelry you know without touching and feeling but deepak uh, let me tell you things are really changing in the country and i could see that on akshay tritya where i was trying to buying something myself online and when tanish told me that sir there are 15 customers for a single bangle and the amount was pretty substantial i actually got shocked and you know me and my wife were discussing that how is it possible that you know india especially indian ladies they are changing for so good that people are buying jewelry online so it is very much possible deepak we see it every day earlier we used to think that major domestic appliances cannot be sold online but when you see a television worth rupees 3 lakhs getting sold online or uh, my side by side getting sold online which is around half lakh rupees of siemens so things have changed you know and covid 19 yes as you also mentioned uh, we have to now look at, uh, in fact we've already done the how to protect our consumers because now uh, the new learning is sold almost thousands online which was never the case before you know the customer complaints our average customer call center call rate is around 1500 per day okay so uh, approximately more than 2000 calls were successfully sold including few very big celebrities online and customers were ready to cooperate because he knew if he won't cooperate his machine is not going to work right so customers were cooperating and this is a learning for me you know that we have actually saved 2000 visit charges and 2000 you know customer was satisfied online by by the video which was not the case in consumer durables ever for a, even a screw loose or a plug loose customer used to just pick up the phone and just say that you know send a person so that thing is definitely changed and of course hygiene will be the first factor now uh, so i was expecting that once this lockdown is over the main product which uh, will get you know see a lot of sales will be a dishwasher and it came true the moment bangalore open anyways we are strong in bangalore the moment bangalore open we have beaten a record of 9 years history of dishwasher in less than 15 days in bangalore itself and we have crossed dishwasher sales which are unprecedented which was the which has crossed our last year diwali sale 
so people have realized that you know one they can live without mates ladies are not going to die without mates okay one very beautiful thing which has come up that men have understood what is a home work what does a homemaker actually does and how much pain it is to be in the kitchen for 24 hours i'll say you know from morning 6:30 tea to late night you know when you actually wind up your kitchen it's a mammoth job for a lady and you know whosoever does it in the kitchen so that has also given us an opportunity that people have realized and people have started seriously thinking on how to have a beautiful kitchen if you go 15 years back or 20 years back the two most ignored rooms in your house uh, for indians were kitchen and bathrooms okay so bathrooms got changed uh, quite some time and now kitchens are changing big time uh, you will be surprised that we have in india we have people spending more than 5 million 6 million and even 10 million on a kitchen okay excluding appliances so that is the kind of uh, people splurging money on kitchen and they now understand the need of a good mixer grinder a need of a good oven because people have experimented i'll call kind of cuisines is this time so that's that's a very big trigger point for india and uh, as far as hygiene is concerned what we were talking deepak you were referring to one of the organizations so what we have done we have already provided 90 day stock to all our 1500 uh, engineers with two masks per day for next 90 days and 500 ml of sanitizer for every month so we have already procured it for our officers for our employees for our indirect employees for our sales consultants and also insurance will see a big change people will go for a larger cover people will include covid so recently we also did that in our organization that you know while renovating you know while renewing our insurance which was due in the covid time uh, i made sure that covid is covered and you know uh, so these are the kind of changes which will definitely happen in india and uh, market is changing and we see a channel uh, shift we see consumer behavior shift and uh, even in bangalore people didn't visit stores they were ordering it online and instead of visiting stores and people were trying to visit a stand alone store rather than a big multi brand stores so that avoid crowds and malls and all that that will happen for some time but that will die down slowly but over a period of time these things are going to improve and uh, as far as my moment is concerned uh, my moment was pretty funny uh, in the meantime we had a board meeting okay where board of directors need to physically appear and if they cannot appear the video has to be recorded and i was not knowing that that this is going to be recorded i was in my vest and my shorts and uh, reclining and i was in a board meeting all of a sudden my company secretary said so we going live so you have to come on video believe you me that was the fastest 30 seconds of my life when i got ready <laughs> so that was my moment of lockdown and she actually came online and she was recording us because that has to be submitted to <laughs> agm thank you neeraj that is so candid and so nice and i we will come back to some of the stronger trends uh, we could have taken a tea break but amulik is here so we will just take it uh, virtually i am quite sure amulik is going to face a lot of challenges given the lockdown situation for us consumers but we'd like to hear from you yeah hi uh, good morning everyone great to be here so um you know sunil lab and rest of the panelists i mean just to share our perspective we are a young company we are trying to figure out uh, this scenario it's a highly unprecedented scenario uh, but uh, you know i think foremost this scenario has allowed us to focus on the basics obviously there is an immediate impact on revenue and that can't be helped till the time the lockdown is fully over and people actually walk over to the stores we will not see uh, those kind of sales but our online delivery sales just to share a perspective for the set of stores that we could open because many of the stores came down into uh, you know severe lockdown zones our online sales have reached about 65 to 70% of the pre covid era for the same set of stores which 
especially if I look at the trust factor, which is hugely important in the F&B category, uh, is broadly encouraging for us. So to share as to how we are thinking through on our execution plans, we are primarily doubling up on delivery. Uh, our goal really is to ensure that our offerings on the online store increase dramatically. We are fundamentally a beverage anchored business, but now we are making a deeper foray into food simply because we are realizing that a work from home scenario calls for an additional level of convenience, which the FNB players like us can offer. So uh, traditionally our sales have been highest on Saturday and Sunday, and they've been going to homes. I'm talking about our delivery sales, but now, you know, work from home being the core scenario for our customers, we've realized that we need to increase our offering so as to solve the convenience problem for people living at home. I think Neeraj also alluded, you know, uh, there was a big period when even maids were not allowed and the amount of workload that uh, specifically the ladies of the house, uh, but now more so even men experienced around food making is something that all of those customers are looking forward to solve. So even in this lockdown, we introduced 10 new food products. We are actually launching five more food products in the next one week. So our food stack will go up. Uh, but fundamental to our business has been really communicating trust around safety and hygiene. Um, you know, our very genesis as a business model lay in giving a hygiene, high quality, consistent experience to the customer. Chai has always been around for ages. So that was the core thing that we differentiated with. But I think uh, this crisis has made us realize that with time, we can't forget that core value and we need to amplify it a lot more. So we recently got our uh, second year renewal of ISO 22000 certification, which is uh, one of the highest safety standards. Uh, this is the second year. We initially went for it thinking that it's a part of our legacy and that we need to keep on building on it. But the COVID experience has made us feel that it's not only just a placid legacy, but a very key competitive differentiator where we need to explain to our customers, communicate to our customers that safety is something which is systemically embedded in our company and not something that we are trying to embrace as a marketing gimmick or uh, you know, as an immediate survival tactic in these times. So safety has been our prime thrust really. Uh, I will not you know, spend time talking about liquidity measures, but frankly for companies which have such a spread of retail as we do, uh, we of course have 40% 40, 40, 40 of our business on the B2B side. Liquidity was the most important aspect towards which we spent the first, I would say 15, 20 days in protecting ourselves. Um, and uh, we are here for the long term. So thankfully we were well buffeted with cash, but most importantly, we, after that we latched on to safety measures. So we had a campaign called GMTS, which is gloves, mask, temperature taking and sanitization measures. So in week one of lockdown, we introduced GMTS 1.0, where we quickly made sure that in spite of supply chain challenges, all our staff has these measures. And then we jumped on to GMTS 2.0, now where we are really changing the use of technology for walk-in customers to make sure that, you know, it's a complete contactless experience. There is a lot of focus now on design. To give you a simple example, we've got 175 stores. How do customers, when they walk in, open the door of the store without even touching it? So we can, of course, take a call to replace it with a sensor-based technology, but we can only do it for a few set of stores, and it's also a very expensive investment. But we could do a lot of changes to the design so that the customer doesn't have to touch the door to open it. You know, so design and GMTS, our core safety program, has been a big thing. Investing in our store staff or partners, uh, Neeraj also brought it up. Uh, all our partners, the entire company is covered by COVID insurance, but we also took this opportunity to introduce a term insurance plan, which was not 
uh, in place for every member of the company because first and foremost we felt that our staff needs to feel safe and embrace operations under these environment and only then they can really uh, wholeheartedly give a level of uh, confidence to the customer last very quick point has been technology technology is going to be embraced in a very rapid level um, online delivery all of us are aware was growing at a very rapid rate but i think what will come out now and we are not seeing it of course because stores haven't started opening but my uh, conviction is that in the next month and a half to two we will see a new wave of technology adoption inside the store so how do you order without interacting with a cashier um, i personally feel that the cashier role is going to be pretty much made redundant in the new times or if not completely redundant hugely compromised um in store use of technology to deliver customer confidence is going to be another big thing so you know this is just to quickly summarize what's happening in our world and what we are seeing talking about my lockdown moment i think um, um the most surprising part intriguing part has been the way the teams got integrated across the company i'm of course giving a professional context but i never thought that a company which is as small as ours but still spread across 7 to 10 cities would get so tightly integrated using zoom uh, you know to be candid i don't think people were as close um amongst themselves or behind the details of the execution plan or the strategy of the company as they became during that crisis so the power of uh online video engagement zoom or google meet and all these platforms to really bring people together in a very very short while has been a big moment for me to really appreciate it comes with its stresses we all know we are sitting in front of the screen for 8 to 10 10 hours but um if you just take a step back and just appreciate how it has made everything so transparent and fast it's quite amazing so that's it from my side so neil thank you amli thank you thank you that's i did not know that you had such a large food basket too at jai point it has given me an option to order today thank you for that <laughs> I don't think you know. I've had. I've been as excited in my life, Vivek, as it's been to get into my car and go half a kilometer to maybe pick up two loaves of bread. A complete waste of petrol, but it's the pleasure <laughs> of driving. And exactly. I know that you know there are people who broken rules and there are cars taking people to their hometown where they are. Right. Uh, I'm sure there's something very interesting that you have to talk to us about mobility. Absolutely. Of course, uh, down moment. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sunil. Yeah, I think uh, personally, uh, I mean, like uh, everybody else on the panel have said, unprecedented times, a uh, lots of learning, and for me personally, two uh, things uh, have stood out. You know, a deep realization that how little we really need to get by, you know, on a daily basis, how we have consistently cluttered our life with uh, gadgets and brands and articles and many stuff. I think that is kind of unraveling. pretty rapidly and uh, deep realization that you can actually have a pretty contented pretty full life with uh, far less i think that is really settling in personally for me um, also another thing that uh, neeraj and amlik spoke about you know a deep appreciation of what happens at home you know i think uh, we men folk have to actually put up our hands and accept that we've been kind of insulated and kept ourselves uh, kind of you know willfully uh, blindfolded to what's happening and let that part of our lives just carry on uh, and i would say with uh, little appreciation i think now uh, far more appreciation to uh, the homemakers uh, uh, in our lives and uh, for people who for women who manage both the home as well as their careers i think uh, no amount of uh, appreciation no amount of admiration is less and these are two personal uh, takes i want to put um, in front of the panel in terms of industry you know i think uh, sunil you uh, you know verbalized exactly what was my thought you know a car industry and automotive industry is very much touch and feel and we call it seat of the pants you know there's a pleasure when you sit behind the steering wheel a power that is unleashed and um, 
to see cars lying idle for months upon you know and kind of becoming absolutely redundant in a customer's life is a little painful um and uh, you know it kind of also creates an appreciation for uh, customers um, because the lockdown is a very antithesis of what the romance of a uh, automotive is is about heading out the freedom of exploring freedom of being uh, with families i think that element has been slightly underrated so far and that has really come out today that customers have started feeling that i need a car for two reasons one is of course to transport uh, me from a to b but also there's a, a little bit of softer aspect to owning an automotive uh, and uh, that kind of comes out very strongly uh go, looking forward i think um, uh, there's a clear need that uh, people would want their own personal safe bubble going uh, forward um surveys and studies across the world have shown that there's going to be an increasing preference for personal transportation um i think uh, that would be uh, clearly seen in india as well uh, people would want to travel in their space, uh, safe bubble and have more predictability have more control over their safety so uh, broadly we are working on this direction how to make car, car ownership much uh, more democratized how to be make it easily accessible uh, we are working on uh, much uh, you know a differentiated kind of ownership cycles uh, be it uh, probably subscription models a low emi ap- approach so that people can get into that ownership cycle very fast in terms of safety you know i think uh, we are i can proudly say that tata motors is one of the manufacturers who have always put safety right up front we put money behind the claim we prioritize safety in our cars uh, and when i say safety this is on road safety uh, we were the first five star global encap rated uh, manufacturer in the country when we came out with the compact suv nexon we followed it up with a hatchback as well and today consumer awareness of safety is really shooting up so uh, under the umbrella of covid an overall sense of safety um, a heightened awareness of safety among all of us and across all strata of uh, society is very very visible so i think intuitively um, uh, since tata motors is so uh, you know aligned with safety there's going to be a clear preference in terms of our brand is what we estimate and we are going to live up to that as well continue to put money behind our uh, positioning like we did in the engineering side in terms of uh, how well our cars are made we have extended the same into uh, the covid situation um, also there's a realization that much a big part of the consumer buying journey uh, of a automotive uh, it in the past it was extremely physical you know physical face to face interaction both as organizations as well as consumers we've realized that a lot of it can be digitalized a lot of it can be you know uh, not face to face but can be done through remote so we are really working on technological in- uh, intervention to make that possible can we do a virtual showroom can we do a um, you know a skype call between a customer associate and a, and a and a and a customer to you know kind of take care of all his doubts and minimize the f- physical contact and when the physical contact happens obviously the, uh, um, tata motors as well as the auto industry has rolled out extremely stringent sops across uh, every step of the customer journey as i said it's a very very physical interaction with automotive right from the time you drive the car multiple people drive the test drive cars there are a lot of crowds in our showroom so every element has been uh, really taken care uh, by tata motors as well as the industry and customers uh, will experience this digitalized kind of a buying journey a much more safer physical interaction and also a uh, movement of the sales experience away from the showroom to a physical uh, digital world and probably at uh, the customer's place of choice you know where he wants to conduct the trans- transaction so huge changes i think coming up in the automotive industry uh, thanks to covid but uh, i believe it's all in the positive way these are probably disruptions which have happened over 3 4 years and it's all been uh, accelerated now for the greater good in terms of my uh, lockdown moment um, so i'm I, i like to be uh, i'm a bit of a fitness fanatic and i was really feeling uh, cooped up inside the home like uh, what sunil you started off and one day i just decided to say uh, decided to make a running track around the house and i ended up uh, running about 25 kilometers within the house wow. and that really uh, 
open my eyes up to the kind of mental barriers we create ourselves and how we are victim to that and it's really opened up my mind that uh, anything is possible with limited resources and it stay that lesson will stay with me for a long time that's amazing 25 kilometers i'd get vertigo if i ran that <laughs> in that fashion so you know just while as we go through this conversation to tell the 300 plus participants who are who are listening to all of you that i will pick up the questions that they have been asking and they have been queuing up and we will pick them up i am an optimist i believe as business leaders and the nature of businesses we have on this panel we would like to see the economy bounce back we would like to bring consumer demand and customer demand both back products business may not have consumers but it has customers right whereas the other businesses definitely have consumers so i want to talk a little bit about what you think you are going to do to bring back that confidence you mentioned trust somebody mentioned practices somebody said that you know there's been a change because of hygiene now someone's buying a dishwasher the convenience of of it but what can you really do in the next few months to stimulate demand to create that change and if it's not your own personal experience that you may want to talk about what do you think other brand providers service providers can company should do this is open and we'll go around with whoever wants to go first uh farooq you're on mute let me unmute yeah. you yeah yeah i think uh, as i said before uh, the big change is to embrace uh, digital uh, both in terms of uh, what you do in house uh, within the company uh, your back end as well as how you serve your clients uh, customers uh, per se so so on both ends you have to really accelerate uh, the use of technology uh, uh, create alliances with startups uh, uh again both for the back end as well as uh, the front end customer serving uh, part uh, that's that's to me is the biggest uh, change there of course many others in terms of creating a resilient supply chain uh, uh, cash flow management uh, but digital uh, uh, thinking of digital possibilities digital first will be the biggest change in my mind all right need it and i'm audible now yeah yeah marketing will see a big change we have also you know in our organization when we uh, post covid obviously every corporate came up with only one thing you know uh, the best case scenario for the balance of year for the worst case scenario the real case scenario optimistic scenario pessimistic scenario this scenario that scenario so under that we realized one thing uh, that marketing yes will definitely take a setback Uh, especially uh, in the newspapers and brands are not going to go very high on tvc you know and spending huge monies uh, but yes uh, we have increased our budget by five times at least on digital and digital one it is cheaper second it is the latest fad and third it is easily you know reachable to the consumers you want to target so digital will definitely see a big change and uh, people would like to spend their monies very very wisely on digital that's the new thing what i definitely see in coming future and as far as demand is concerned uh, of course uh, we have to make sure that our logistics in place and our now material is properly spread you know because post gst companies had actually reduced uh, warehouses and go downs and you know we were mostly operating from central kind of warehouses in top 3 cities like mumbai chennai and delhi uh, so in covid we uh, realized that you know now when we immediately need material in bangalore it is not there so we need immediately material in calcutta we need there so now products like uh, as i spoke earlier also dishwashers and maybe front loading washing machines and mixer grinders and so many other appliances we have to make sure that they are widely spread in the country because we have seen demand from tier 2 tier 3 kind of cities for even uh, in built ovens and dishwashers you know Uh, just to give you a very good example a place everybody must have heard uh, called nanded okay which is such a small town in maharashtra one of our dealer has sold 78 dishwashers where wow. he has not sold seven in his lifetime so it was unthinkable for us to have a stock ready for a place called nanded 78 dishwashers 
So that's an eye opener for us. So sort of we'll make sure that the stock is available in Pune. You know, so that is kind of planning will change a bit. What I and we are already working on that. So and marketing will go digital a big time, and channel will go online big time. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else wants to yeah, add I to think, that? Yeah, let me um, <coughs> here. Let me make a few comments. So uh, couldn't agree more that. Uh, Digital is going to get accelerated uh, really, really aggressively, both on um, you know customer experience or customer interaction-related digital channels, and also on the marketing slash advertising uh, channel front. But I think uh, for us as a company, and uh, uh, quite likely this is true for many companies, especially on the consumer front on the omni-channel consumer front is that the whole notion of how our employees work, what is the definition of employee productivity? What is the new definition of their job role? Um, and how teams need to really engage with each other to get things done uh, is a completely new arena. And I think this is going to get accelerated like crazy. Um, I think companies such as ourselves have already embraced Agile as an approach to really make uh, things get done, essentially by, uh, by, by the power of small teams. But um, you know, uh, the whole definition of employee productivity is going to really be redefined. Uh, to give you an example, retail, you know, I alluded that if you go to any any store, QSR, or if, even if it's an apparel store, there was always this glorified cashier role. You know, all the employees seem like junior minions doing the servicing while there is this guy seated on a desk with a tie and, you know, basically just <laughs> cutting out a bill for you. And he was the senior guy. That role is going to be completely redundant. And I hope it becomes redundant because um, you need to spread the notion of job responsibility in a very, very different way now. Um, and we are already sketching out the new customer experience for our stores. Um, but this is really happening across the company, right from the supply chain back end. Uh, and it's going to affect each and every part of the front end channel, be it our dispenser business, be it our online deliveries or packaged products. So employee productivity and how teams and employees work may sound like a very boring operational somewhat you know opaque kind of a topic but frankly for companies uh, this is where the real action is going to be uh, because consumers are not going to know of the new way of working unless and until companies really give them an opportunity to see that and uh, not every company surely a small company of our size we are not going to be able to spend crores on a digital ad spend to give customers a view of what their interaction is going to look like. So quite likely, it's going to be built incrementally as customers start engaging with companies like us and the word of mouth travels that, wow, you know, this is the new experience. And that's going to be made possible through employee, employee training and employee productivity. So um, I'm really quite... Uh, intrigued and energized around the prospect of that. So, I'm, Vivek, there are many questions yep. for you spe specific on mobility. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead and say what you want to say. Yeah, very quickly, probably. I mean, uh, you, you spoke uh, specifically about demand generation, but uh, I think uh, the need is now to take the product to the customer. Uh, I think we cannot be sitting back in our stores and in our physical uh, locations waiting for the customers to come. Uh, demand generation has to be at the, uh, the point where the customer is. Uh, whether we do it digitally, it's a combination of physical, digital, um, that clearly uh, is a way forward. Of course, there'll be some initial demand now, uh, immediately after the lockdown is lifted. But in terms of uh, overall uh, trend, we see uh, the customers expecting things to come to them. So that really uh, would be the challenge. And that is where we're going to focus all our uh, technology, marketing monies and even other infrastructure elements. So I'm, there are, I'm going to integrate some of the questions because it will be easier rather than go through the audience's asked. 
the uh, other participants have asked. So this I'm indicating for both Farooq and Neeraj because it's uh, on, on curled wood manufacturing. It says that in the last two months or so, you know, manufacturing has not really picked up. It's very, very, very small. Do you see, do you not see this as a big opportunity in consumer demand or, you know, uh, because it's got <coughs> deferred, so therefore people want to acquire more. And during lockdown, consumers are also looking at alternate buying channels. I think we spoke about it a little earlier. But India is a country of shopkeepers. You know, we like that transaction. So what changes do you see happening within your own sector and within other sectors of both of these, manufacturing and consumers? Uh, I'll, I'll go first. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, manufacturing was disturbed. Uh, and in fact, I also opened my plant a week back in Chennai. And uh, so two good things have happened. One, uh, there's a lot of stock ease at the trade level. So partners have really sold the material uh, during these sales wherever they've opened, but they've not bought from us. So I see this uh, as an opportunity. You know, there will be a search. So we are seeing wherever it is opening, like a small place like Goa, uh, you know, which opened <clears throat> some 10 days back. And the kind of sales what we saw in Goa were unprecedented. And, you know, selling 100 units of company like Bosch and Siemens in less than 24 hours was unheard of in India. Okay, so maybe the demand was, you know, accumulating, people were waiting for it. And of course, uh, fortunately, we are into a segment where uh, the effect of lockdown, even after, you know, lockdown is not much because we deal in premium and luxury segments like Bosch, Siemens and Gagarao. So people are waiting for, you know, things to start and there will be a surge I see definitely in the process. But that's going to be, and that's not going to remain forever. Uh, there, there, there will be a lull for sure because overall mood is down, you know. So overall, if you see uh, 12 crores laborers losing their jobs and so many companies are laying off people, uh, that's not, uh, that's mood is bad right now. And on a lighter side, Amulik, your cashiers must already be having a sleepless nights on all the chai points that you know, CEO thinking is that. So, but yes, that's going to change. And that is going to give us actually a new way of thinking how to design our new offices. Uh, you know, we were not even looking at the space, whether 30% space will open or not. Whether Nowadays, you can't even open your windows. So these things are definitely going to change real estate. And our preference for office designing, which I, and now I'm actually thinking, you know, a lot of companies must be thinking, all of you guys, that uh, there are so many jobs which can actually be done from home and back end. There was no need. So, and there are a lot of, uh, you know, there is a lot of teamwork which is possible online. We've launched almost three new projects in 60 days, four new projects, completely online with the help of the team, you know. So that's possible. So there can be a reduction of roles in future. I'll be very candid about it. And there will be a new way of sitting in offices and the way people sit and the way people uh, design their offices and a lot of back-end jobs now can be made off-role, okay? And can be actually done from home or a laptop from wherever you're sitting, even from a cafe. So that's, that's definitely one change which I see coming and it is inevitable. Yeah, on, on the manufacturing side, even before uh, COVID happened, we were seeing some signs of recession uh, and cost pressures uh, across many uh, uh, segments out there, uh, including uh, automotive. Uh, and so many companies had started adopting uh, digital technologies in, in manufacturing and creating what we call as a smart factory where technology is really used for preventive maintenance or, or uh, smoothening the flow of uh, material. Uh, so that journey will now get definitely uh, highly uh, accentuated, accelerated out there. Uh, the concentration risk uh, uh, is going to be looked at very closely, be it on the vendor side. Uh, are you relying very heavily on uh, one or two vendors, uh, particularly if they happen to be from overseas or from China? Uh, so you will want to explore multiple vendors uh, and even on the customer side, uh, you will like, want to broad base your, your customer base out there. So, so the other big change, as I mentioned uh, in my introductory uh, remarks, uh, one is, of course, the new direct-to-consumer uh, 
or if he's a customer engagement channel, even if it's not directly a selling channel, uh, you will want to engage with your customers directly uh, as opposed to the normal distributor retailer route. And the other uh, big change, uh, like Sunil mentioned, Indians will still prefer to shop from their neighborhood uh, Kirana so, uh, but companies will increasingly approach the retailer directly. Uh, uh, they may set up call centers as opposed to having a large uh, sales force which will go knocking door to door. So, so that part, uh, again, technology will come in or they may create apps where retailers can directly pull in products. So, so clearly uh, uh, both on the manufacturing as well as uh, on the distribution and the sales side, there'll be big, big change. And again, it, it will be leveraging technology and startups in a big way there. So thank you, thank you for Vivek. There are quite a few questions on automotive. Obviously it's a category of great interest. So I'm gonna just list them down. Uh, do you intend as a company to take sustainability into account? People will take less personal transport. Is the demand for the second car in the home going to go up? Is this going to be a reused car or a new car? What happens to all the luxury segments? And how do you then deal with the potential of the rural market, which has seen an impact with a lot of people coming back from the mega cities over there? Uh, so a lot of questions around cars. Maybe you want to give a view on this. Sure. So I'll start with the first question, the sustainability part. So um, I mean, we, uh, obviously uh, the fuel choice will become a key element of sustainability. Uh, electrification is definitely uh, one of the possibilities and distinct possibilities and directions for the future. Uh, from Tata Motors, we, have, uh, we already have two cars in the electric uh, portfolio and it's going to continuously increase. Alternate fuels like CNG also will uh, come in. With government regulations uh, also kicking in in the future, I don't see an increased automotive presence impacting the environment or sustainability in a negative manner. If anything, it might be uh, on the positive side, actually. In terms of, uh, um, you know, the demand for a first car or a used car, yes, I think there, uh, there will be parallel demand for both. Uh, we'll see an increased demand uh, for used cars as well. Uh, more so in the smaller towns. It will also be the resurgence of uh, the smaller towns. You know, um, For the last couple of years, we've seen the entire industry growth coming in from the smaller towns. And this, I believe, uh, will be hugely accelerated. In the larger towns, we have the luxury of having a little bit of a better uh, you know, uh, public transportation infrastructure. But smaller towns uh, is purely dependent on personal transportation. So we'll see a further acceleration. From uh, Tata Motors side, we will focus, uh, we have, we'll have an enhanced focus on the, um, I, I won't say rural India, but probably the, the towns, uh, B, B and C class towns, in terms of uh, uh, extending digitalization even there. Uh, fortunately, our uh, mobile networks and uh, internet availability has really uh, you know, moved very fast. And this is one time I think all of us have to acknowledge that the digital payments have really helped us. Uh, I can't just imagine how this scenario would have been without uh, the digital payment infrastructure, uh, uh, you know, being well settled in the country. So uh, I think uh, the next step is to make loans available digitally, reduce the paperwork, reduce the documentation. There's a clear call out to all the financial institutions to make their entire process much more simpler, faster and digitize it. And that will really help, you know, not only automotive, but access to various other, uh, you know, elements uh, easier in the smaller towns. In terms of the question on luxury, I think um, that is a uh, luxury uh, products, not only cars, but products have seen that they follow a different path, uh, which is largely not in line with the general populace. And I think that will continue on its own way. If anything, the luxury car makers will be far more conscious in terms of being environmentally sustainable and providing cars which uh, really are eco-friendly, I would say, alternative fuel options, electrification. So I think that, again, would follow its own path in terms of demand, but not uh, necessarily at the cost of sustainability. So I hope that I've, answered uh, the question. Sunil. Yeah, it did. Have any of you observed a change in your consumer behavior, you know, in these two months, which is now not going to come back? So there was a habit pre-COVID. And during COVID, something has changed. 
you know, it may, I'm not talking of temporary change, right? The adjustments you've done, but have any of you seen a change in behavior which is not going to come back, which is therefore a completely new consumer behavior? Anybody? I think, uh, you know, uh, we are at a stage where, frankly, at least in the QSR space and uh, uh, dispenser space, which is a B2B office arena, we haven't really seen the customer demand opening up. You know, we haven't really experienced how their behavior is actually going to change. Uh, one thing is very clear though, that uh, the adoption of FNB delivery, especially as the element of trust gets built up over a period of time, is going to be a lot more stronger. From a convenience angle, foremost, we need to understand what is the problem that delivery is going to solve. It's going to save time for people at home. It was glamorous to do all the cooking during the first two months, but frankly, with the level of work pressure that everybody <coughs> has, nobody wants to spend two to three, three hours in the kitchen and also quickly get back and get on Zoom calls and office calls. So uh, we are yet to see the full impact but the initial indicators seem to um, drive a higher adoption of online delivery, food delivery. Thanks. You know, for uh, Farooq, Vivek, Neeraj, uh, and Farooq more from an industry point of view, fixed costs, right? They don't go away. Therefore, they're called fixed costs, right? And in manufacturing, especially where Vivek and you, your entities have large manufacturing base, how are you going to cope with this fixed cost over time now? And what is the industry at a larger level going to do to handle this? Okay, I'll, I'll start. I think uh, um, when we've already started working on this, and uh, it's not it's no short uh, a solution, you know. We begin with being extremely uh, clear that, in fact, our approach is there's nothing called a fixed cost. Everything becomes a variable cost and start, you know, uh, start right, uh, from the reason why the cost exists. And that's the approach uh, we are taking. Slightly radical, but I believe that's the right way to go ahead with it. Um, uh, second is to uh, spread the cost around also. Uh, I think uh, value chains, the way uh, they have been traditionally made, uh, have to be completely uh, uh, relooked at. You know, and uh, uh, like I said earlier, fixed cost might actually uh, have to be restructured in a manner where um, they can either be... Uh, shifted to a variable cost or spread over a larger period of time. These are the two, uh, especially in terms of automotive, because um, I mean, we are an industry which uh, focuses a lot on the future. You know, uh, lead times are huge to bring out a uh, car. It takes anything between three to four years and uh, about 1,200 to uh, 2,000 crores. You know, so there's no way that we can run away from these kind of numbers. And the only solution is to completely relook at the value chain the reason a cost exists and how do you kind of spread it across various elements to kind of soften the blow. I think companies will have to now learn to live with lesser real estate. Uh, so like Amulit uh, mentioned, if, if the cashier uh, is no longer required in a shop, you're that much freeing up that much space that the cashier is there for occupying real estate. Uh, so, so be it in offices, be it in factories, uh, as things become much more nimble, agile, uh, you can definitely look at freeing up a lot of real estate, uh, which was just there, uh, but you ne never really question it. Uh, and and uh, uh, even a professional services firm like EY is really looking at that. Uh, uh, the other big thing which you will see in India is uh, variabilizing uh, uh, compensation, uh, people compensation, and and uh, we'll see a much sharper focus on performance management and compensating people based on performance. Uh, uh, so if if right now it's like a 80-20 uh, fix uh, versus variable, uh, you will see a shift almost towards a 60-40 or or even uh, more uh, out there. So that's another way you can really manage your fixed costs. <coughs> Same, I think I, I agree with Farooq that variable part is going to go up and companies will you know, focus KPIs, especially for sales and marketing guys, more on performance driven things. 
so that you know this will actually help in reducing fixed costs and companies have to really be very very conscious about now real estate and kind of offices they're making kind of space they're creating so that fixed cost and of course marketing uh, for some time is going to change the route uh, not for a very long time for at least for next one year yes um, personally as a leader i don't believe in reducing manpower i believe in keeping the organization lean and you know raising the productivity of your present manpower rather than first opportunity sack your people and cut your salaries so we in bsh we have not done that in fact we have given the highest ever increment and uh, the best ever bonuses on 31st of march uh, we could afford uh, we could afford to do that because we have kept our organization that way so as a leader i completely do not believe in sacking people and reducing manpower so it is uh, you know it is very imperative to actually plan your organization what companies majorly what i have seen in my career you know uh, in last 26 years whatever that first company starts to build organization you know left right and center and you know there are so much of people and they keep their tops heavy they keep their corporate so heavy and they do not realize top heavy organization is never good so rather than you know having people on field and less on top companies try to make this mistake so basically we should be avoiding it and in future we'll see definitely we'll see you know you you go to okay let's talk about chai point or let's talk about a restaurant sometimes i really wonder why there are five guys in a black coat standing there doing you know they're actually doing nothing but you know making gestures to make people sit so there are unnecessarily staff i see at so many places okay so it is better we keep it clean and let person justify his job and do a two people's job a three person's job and make his position secure of course it is in the leadership hand so you know we in bsh we believe in lean organization a very lean organization uh, no unnecessarily fancy designations and no unnecessarily but when the time comes this is the testing time you know when the time has come instead of sacking people we have given the highest ever increment and the best bonuses in last 9 years so that people were so surprised and team is so supercharged that i do not see any reason that post covid why my team will not deliver so companies have to leaders have to think this way now yeah so one of the things is about you know uh, we have seen that a lot of the retailers are now going you know they are sending you messages on whatsapp or they are saying deal with us through e-commerce and you know that's the, that's the mood right now what is how is this going to change uh, the consumer shopping behavior both across the country not just in mega cities right well, how do you see these changes happening there are two things i would like to add one there is no need for brick and mortar stores or the mom and pop stores to go berserk that they'll die they'll never die in india okay we've seen it in recent uh, lockdown time how kirana stores have just come back okay so the only change what they need to do which they were not willing to do even the biggest of the chain stores of the country that they need to develop their online capability of delivering things instead of getting scared from amazon and flipkart you know they should be developing their skills and capabilities and they have to also change their organization to be a more online friendly organization let's talk about let's say reliance or a proma or a vijay sales or any big partner okay so they are now thinking and developing their online clothing capabilities okay i was so surprised that people order chai on online you know so that shows that india is a great country okay so our internal consumption is so good and so big that there is no need to get scared of online you need to develop your online capabilities that will solve the problem yeah online trend will go up that's un- inevitable that's unstoppable I just want to second what. Uh, sorry, Neeraj, go ahead. And Amoli, can you also add how you think that consumer journey is changing? You know, not may not no, be no, now have, because there is a yeah. Sure, I either two, of you, yeah. I have two interesting questions. One to Amoli, that do really people, uh, you know, uh, order chai online? Then how do you make sure it is delivered fresh and hot? Because I'm never done. <laughs> <laughs> so you've given because me. I used perfect. to go to Chai Point in Gurgaon very often. Amoli. Uh, to spend the app campaign here it is uh, your so like- you've given me a perfect plug to really talk <laughs> about the company neeraj <laughs> you know so uh, uh, yeah so essentially 
you know, frankly, chai has been delivered in India since ages. I remember in my past life going to uh, Reserve Bank of India in Bombay for a meeting, and uh, I used to work at a tech company then, Microsoft. So meeting the GM, and I was waiting, and I realized the chai was coming on the lift with me in a polythene bag, which was then poured into a kettle and then yes, brought into the meeting. In the smallest so, possible cup in Bombay. In, no, I gave a GM meeting, so it was served in bone china, but it came in a polythene bag. Yeah. So, um, actually, the delivery of chai in India is a very sizable business. For us, it's a, it's a business north of 50 CR a year. Wow. It's very significant. And uh, uh, the innovation here is that it's a six-layer BPA-free polymer, which retains the heat for about 65 to 70 minutes, okay. piping hot. So it's like a cardboard shell with a, you literally assemble the cardboard like a pizza box into a flask, and then that flask is delivered. Um, we couldn't patent it, so now, you know, everybody is using that, but I can assure you that numbers are very, very significant. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, so, Sunil, I mean, uh, just to kind of give you uh, a sense, you know, what the customers see, I think this whole COVID scenario has raised the importance of communities. People live in communities, demands come from communities, and the fundamental building block of communities are houses or homes, right? So, this simple appreciation is the new reality and companies who can serve communities down right to the basic unit, which is the house, you know, which means Kiriana, as Neeraj said, having the capability to deliver to the household, a chai point, being able to deliver food and beverages for a party occasion or for a birthday occasion straight to the flat or the apartment. As Vivek said, you know, a test drive call coming from an apartment and the car waiting below for the customer to come down and try it, that's the that's the key. And uh, India is a massive, massive micro market. I have a dear friend and a mentor who shared this line with me that uh, micro at scale is the new mega. So you know, it's such a such a powerful line, and I think the COVID world has made us all appreciate that. Uh, but these are big words. Frankly, execution is very tough. It is brick by brick. Uh, it is step by step. And we ourselves are learning as to how to go about it. Tech platform is a very, very important. I mean, tech has a big role to play. Uh, we have our own tech platform called Fountain. We are, in fact, in the process of broad basing and releasing it so that companies can ride on it and enable these micro market deliveries. But it's a it's a huge, huge area, but the execution also calls for a lot of basic assumptions to be revisited. So, I, if I can you know, uh, add yeah, two sure. lines, yeah, so please, please. I mean, uh, what we I mean can't agree more with what uh, Neeraj and Amlik said. You know, so on one side we are seeing a larger digital affiliation of customers, but also this increased uh, propensity <laughs> to shop around locally and more increased awareness of what's closer to me. And this is clearly coming out in the way customers interact with us digitally. You know, There was a time when digital was something which was happening from Bombay, the head, of, head office, and uh, the dealers were just more concerned in walk-in customers who come into the store. But in the last one month, we've seen a lot of our dealership coming and <coughs> saying that, I've made a Facebook face, a page. I've made an Instagram page. You know, tell me how to manage a website, you know, and tell me how to capture people locally because customers are telling them that we don't want uh, Tata Motors from Bombay to be connecting with us, but we want the local store yeah. to say that I'm here for you. You know, I think this uh, fascinating uh, aspect of localization, but still digitalization, I think this is really uh, interesting. Paruk, yep. is revenge shopping coming back? Uh, I don't think so. No. <laughs> no. That's what happened in China, right? When people went and bought a lot of luxury products. Yeah. I, somehow, uh, Indians uh, are a bit different in that sense. So, I, you know, I could be wrong, but uh, I personally don't think so. So, uh, I noticed everybody <laughs> talked about digital. Nobody spoke about the big elephant in the room, which is television. Right? 
which has seen a huge surge in growth. I remember seeing one automotive ad, it was for BMW. And I thought that was smart branding because it's the best time to advertise. You have maximum people and probably pricing isn't the minimum. Best was, yeah, not minimum, but you know, would be far more for less clutter. There was very little clutter, right? So I'm just trying to understand, is your mix going to change for any of you very significantly? For those of you who do communicate and promote and advertise, and what's it going to be like? For the short time, if you ask me, definitely yes. But down the, uh, down the line, two years, three years, it will come back. It'll come but back. for next one year, definitely, because, you know, it's very simple. So TVC is very expensive. Okay, yeah. The prime time is very expensive. Yeah. And best of the events are not going to happen now. And when you said it is not cluttered, but at the same time, consumer memory is very short. If you will advertise, okay, spend monies, because rates are not going down. Rather, they're going up because the television viewing and DRP has gone up. But, and you are amongst, you know, lockdown. So you're not going to buy that, right? Sure. So, so that money for me is a complete waste. So rather, the consumer behavior is changed for next one year. Our, our spend is going to definitely change from TVC and print to more on BTL and digital. So on store activity, maybe, and uh, digital, because uh, every kind of consumer is now digitally connected, whether it is a youth, whether yeah. it is middle-aged, middle -aged, and whether it is our parents. You know, so all three have their own WhatsApp communities and groups. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so our definitely consumer durable industry, I see it is changing for sure for next Anybody wants to add? Because I've got to hand over to Deepak then. Yeah, I think uh, um, we didn't speak about television because we had to bring in the relevance of uh, newspapers because I see uh, a little bit of a doubt in terms of how the newspaper business is going to go ahead with, with all this. And I think the availability of PDFs and kind of uh, shot themselves a little bit in the foot uh, when content is available free. But yes, largely more digital spend. And from my perspective, maybe uh, the share of newspapers might shift to television is what uh, would be my quick response. Parukh, any change you notice with your clients? No, I, I, I don't think television is going to die. Uh, no, it's not die. Even over the next one year, you will see in the next two months a big uh, upswing there. Uh, yeah. Because clearly, uh, uh, there's no other better medium to reach the masses. And, and even right now, a rerun of Mahabharat. Uh, Amai. And Made Durdashan number one in the country. Yeah. So, so clearly, uh, uh, if you want a mass uh, uh, reach out there, there's nothing to beat television. Uh, yeah. so and, the question is, and, question is not about television popularity. The question is affordability of the organization. Yeah. If you want to have measures and not sacking your people and reduce other costs, so best way is to cut, you know, cost which are change your mix. That's yeah. what I'm it, it boils down to the cost per reaching a particular uh, yeah. 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 Get, viewer. Get, I agree. Yeah. Cost per viewer, uh, which matters, and mm. and digital is not cheap. Uh, let's mm. let's face it, not cheap. But as compared to TVC, it is pretty cheap. No, 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 it's not. Okay, so we have we have to That's hand over back to we have to hand over to Deepak. Uh, I, we couldn't take all the questions. I'm sure they'll arrange for some of the questions to come to you because they are targeted at uh, certain specific domains or companies. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being Thank here you. on a Saturday. Stay well, stay healthy. Let's keep our fingers crossed for better days and for the lockdown to be lifted and for India to return to normalcy. Thank you, Deepak, for having us all here. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you, Deepak. And Neeraj, I can only say, please reduce the time frame of the advertising because that's a business we survive on. Yeah, I know. I know you are coming to it. <laughs> yeah. Sunil, Sunil. 30 seconders, we have to shoot to 10 seconders or maybe something like that. <laughs> Sunil, Sunil, thank you very much for a, okay. for a great moderation. I think uh, it is never easy to moderate a panel on a, on a digital uh, screen. But I think you did a fantastic job. Thank a very you. Job. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm happy. Happy. I must say that. Happy. Uh, uh, great insights, uh, extremely, extremely engaging, and uh, you know, for the for the very first time in a in a long time, I would say that no one knows what the future holds, and uh, uh, not even the not even the experts. So uh, let's let's make the best what we have, and and you know, just a small uh, uh, thing that came to my mind. I was having a chat with a 
uh, with the CEO of a large retail company. And I actually asked him that everybody's talking about digital and digital and digital. Uh, is this how it is going to span out? And he said, yes, while the digital is a universal term, uh, but you know, brick and mortar is something which a consumer would look for a touch and feel at this point in time. He's going to get tired of this digital very soon. And he would like to go down to a brick and mortar place to touch and feel these things. And Vivek, now we know the secret of your um, eternal youthfulness uh, by running uh, 25, 25 kilometers. kilometers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's outstanding. I remember uh, Karan Bhatia was on the show a couple of weeks back, and uh, he spoke about uh, you know taking a walk in his balcony for 15 kilometers in a day. So uh, one notion you guys have cleared up that the Bombay houses are not small anymore. And you can actually the find <laughs> There's uh, also a corridor in the building. Uh, uh, a track <laughs> out there. And uh, uh, one very interesting thing, which I noticed, you know, I mean, Neeraj has been hiding his uh, tattoo in his formal shirt. So today, <laughs> that's got revealed. So, and, uh, and Amlik, we know that uh, you enjoy the water drinking in a beer mug. So that's <laughs> also quite uh, interesting. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for, for all this. And uh, look forward to seeing uh, all of you. And to the participants. And to all the participants. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank, 300 you. Plus. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, look forward to seeing you all next Saturday with uh, another set of uh, 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 experts on uh, the revival strategy. Till then, thank you very much. Goodbye. Namaskar. Bye, Stay Nepal. healthy. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Nice meeting you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Nice meeting you. Bye. Nice meeting you.